This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Right now, a toddler and a teenager shot. Tonight, Metro Police are investigating two separate shootings that left a two-year-old and a 17-year-old hurt. Both incidents happened just blocks apart from each other on the east side. And they are a symptom of a much larger problem in that area. IMPD says the shootings do not appear to be related. Investigators say a two-year-old was shot in the wrist around 8 this morning in the 400 block of North Bradley Avenue. That's in the Tuxedo Park neighborhood. The toddler is stable at a local hospital. Police have not released much information, but say the child did not shoot himself. He is expected to be okay. Just after 6 o'clock this morning, a 7 17-year-old boy was shot and critically hurt north of Washington Street on Linwood Avenue. That's near East Washington and Emerson. Police say it's not clear if the victim was waiting for the school bus or walking in that area. But these are far from the only issues to hit that east side neighborhood. RTV6's Stephanie Wade hears from people there and looks into the plans to make that area a safer place to live, work, and play. The two-year-old is expected to be okay tonight. The child was shot in the wrist at this home off of Michigan and Sherman Drive. Neighbors tired of the violence. I hope and pray that it's never him. I hope and pray that it's never any child. Parents shaken in the neighborhood tonight after two kids were shot within blocks of each other. While violence is not uncommon on the east side, there is support and there are programs aimed at catching people before they fall. Shane Shepard founded Before You Fall to help people struggling in the community, especially kids. He teaches an after-school program focused on addressing trauma and societal influences that initiate violence. These young black kids, they grew up in war-torn environments where they go to funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral with no help, and then they go to school where they're uneducated, bored. Learn more about this program coming up at 6. Working for you, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Thanks, Stephanie. And it is our mission to work for you. If you are not getting the answers you deserve, reach out to us by emailing workingforyou at rtv6.com. Moving now to our Storm Team 6 forecast. Extreme humid conditions on this cloudy day around central Indiana. And a spot storm is still possible. Meteorologist Kyle Mounts is here in the tracking center monitoring what's ahead for our Tuesday evening. Yeah, and we really kind of dodged the bullet last night as far the as storms, those storms. Yeah. Parts of southwestern Indiana got in on a little bit of that activity, but as you mentioned, just an isolated chance for a passing shower this evening. 83 degrees for us right now. You can see a little bit of sunshine that's breaking out over downtown Indianapolis, and that's also helping to kick up that breeze a little bit out of the north and northwest around 12 miles per hour. But here's that front. It is stationary, so it's not going to be moving a whole lot, and that's also why we're still dealing with very humid air. We've had just a few of these showers popping up near Greenfield, Newcastle, all these sliding off to the south and east, not anticipating any severe weather and in fact very isolated showers. Most of us staying dry this evening with those temperatures generally in the middle 70s through 11 o'clock with that west wind around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Over the next few days we do have rain chances but they're fairly low right through the upcoming weekend. We'll talk about who could use that rain the most in a few minutes. A former contractor with the Indiana National Guard is speaking out following the resignation of the Guard's top leader. The governor announced this week he asked Major General Courtney Carr to step down. Call 6 Investigates Kara Kenny spoke with the woman who filed a lawsuit against Carr this month. Sherry McLaughlin filed this lawsuit on August 1st against the Indiana National Guard's top leader, alleging defamation and retaliation. Been terrified for the last two years because the guard, you know, a lot of them are civilian. I don't know who knows who, who's safe to trust. Sherry McLaughlin does not want to show her face because she's afraid. She worked at the Tyndall Armory as a government contractor in 2017. She says Major General Courtney Carr, the Adjutant General of the Indiana National Guard, had an affair with a subordinate. Sherry says sexual relationships involving higher-ups were rampant in the agency. She says when she spoke up, she was subjected to retaliation and intimidation, and ultimately she resigned. And when she got a different job, she says the new company fired her within 10 days. After RTV6 reported on Sherry's lawsuit, Major General Carr announced his resignation and retirement. Sherry alleges in her lawsuit, Carr was behind the retaliation. What is your reaction to Carr resigning? I was shocked. 
I, number one, didn't think it would happen, especially this quickly, but it also struck me as odd that he's retiring with full benefits and it's not really a slap on the wrist for him at all. He loses nothing, meanwhile I lose everything. Sherry says she hopes her lawsuit will clear her name and prompt changes within the Indiana National Guard. Tonight on the News at 6, why Sherry says Governor Holcomb could have done more to address problems within the agency. Working for you in Indianapolis, I'm Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny. And we reached out to Carr's attorney for comment, and we are still waiting to hear back. The Indiana National Guard issued a statement saying, quote, the Indiana National Guard as a whole prioritizes its care for all uniformed and civilian personnel within the organization and continues to be a ready and reliable force supporting its communities, state, and nation. It's not something Colts fans want to hear. Colts owner Jim Ursay says quarterback Andrew Luck is dealing with more than a calf strain. We need to get to sports director Dave first for what this could mean for the team with high expectations this year. Dave. Hi guys, thanks, good evening. Don't blame any Colts fans if their level of concern for Andrew Luck went from maybe tepid to full-blown panic today. It was an interesting morning when Colts owner Jim Ursay went on a national radio show and offered a little more information about Andrew's strained calf. Everyone's um, had their questions about Andrew and that sort of thing, but I really feel, you know, very confident that uh, he's going to, you know, find his way through this thing. I think, you know, after Durant thing and everything, everyone's there on the side of caution, but quite frankly, this is not even in the Achilles tendon. It's, um, you know, in a, 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 another area, it's a bone, you know, I, I'm not a good at these things, but it's called like, you know, mo. Um, something else it's a small little bone and ryan deem had it and raheem brock i think had it the trainers told me but he's you know he's doing very well very excited he's a married man baby on the way and he couldn't be more excited for the season and and uh, we wish there wasn't any little tweaks at all but you know as you know bill you know these things come up and you just gotta deal with them Okay, so several things in that. Durant is a reference to NBA superstar Kevin Durant, who also had a, 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 straf, a calf strain and then blew out his Achilles in his return during the NBA Finals. And Mo is a likely reference to a condition called myositis ossificans, which uh, where bone tissue forms inside a muscle. And in this case, it would be Andrew's left calf. By the way, that's not the same uh, injury that former Colt Ryan Deem suffered, uh, furthering the muddy waters in all this. But uh, some new information, nonetheless, concerning Andrew Luck. And keep in mind, the season opener still just over three weeks away. All this, of course, as the Browns come to town tomorrow. Two workouts, Wednesday and Thursday, both starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Luck is not expected to participate. Day first, RTV6 Sports. All right, thanks, Dave. Tonight, a state representative says she will not challenge Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb in the 2020 campaign. After traveling around the state considering a bid, Democrat Carly Maser of Indianapolis announced today she will not do so. Maser criticized Holcomb and his leadership of the state's Department of Veteran Affairs after it granted money to employees that was intended for military veterans. Former Health Commissioner Woody Myers is the only declared Democratic candidate so far. Indiana Senator Eddie Melton of Gary is also considering a bid. A statewide faith group delivered a letter to Governor Eric Holcomb today urging him to push for gun safety legislation in Indiana. Leaders of faith in Indiana said to fail to act after three recent mass shootings in the country is to to be complicit. They asked Holcomb to denounce white supremacy, saying people experience it here in Indiana. The group also asked Holcomb for new specific gun laws in 2020. Some of those requests include banning assault weapons and mandating background checks. These are not just individual acts of bigotry that we have seen from El Paso to a garlic festival to people who go are going out uh, doing school shopping and others who are going out to just enjoy family times. These are not individual acts of bigotry, but systemic acts that require systemic action. And just in tonight, Governor Holcomb's office responding to the request. Holcomb's press secretary released the following statement to our TV6, quote, Governor Holcomb will always look closely at the overall needs and best interests of our state as he aims to keep Indiana moving forward in the best way possible. There is no higher priority than the safety and security of who
Hoosiers, end quote. Today, we are getting a better look at Indianapolis's Mayor Joe Hoxett's budget proposal for 2020. Hoxett presented the budget at last night's City County Council meeting, saying it is his third straight balanced budget, meaning the city takes in more money than it spends without having to dip into reserves. The budget also promises no tax increases on the people of Indianapolis. Here are a few specific public safety items Hoxett wants to focus on with your tax money in 2020. The budget includes 2% raises for police officers and firefighters, as well as increasing the starting salary of IMPD and IFD recruits to $51,000 a year. Nearly $300,000 is allocated for anti-cancer initiatives for the Indianapolis Fire Department, like new requirements for cleaning equipment. He also wants to add $250,000 to the Crime Prevention Grant Fund, bringing it to $3 million. The budget still must be approved through the council, which will happen over the next two months. Still ahead of 5.30 on RTV6, the California city is taking a first-of-its-kind approach to gun control. What makes this proposal different and the reaction to the idea? And just ahead here at 5, kids are back in school. Most students carry around smartphones. As parents, what can you do to make sure those phones and apps are not taking over your child's quality education time? And the clouds are keeping our temperatures fairly comfortable right now, but there's plenty of summer warmth off to the south and west. I'll let you know when our temperatures will start to heat up. You're watching RTV6 News at 5. With more work to do. Welcome back to RTV6 News at 5. A good day on Wall Street. The Dow finishing up 372 points. Stocks soared after the United States delayed some tariffs on Chinese goods. Those goods include cell phones, laptop computers, video game consoles, certain toys, computer monitors, and certain items of footwear and clothing. High-speed police chases are all too common. But a slow-speed chase is making news tonight. Late last night in Monroe County, Deputy Landon Reynolds spotted this uncooperative steer. That's when Deputy Reynolds started the slow-speed pursuit in the area of Curry Pike and Vernal Pike. Despite the police lights, that steer just kept trotting away toward that intersection. Well, it took a while, but deputies finally wrangled the steer and got it out of the street. Good thing. And right now, police are searching for two suspects caught on camera stealing a four-wheeler from a Westfield Lawn Care Service. Surveillance video from BAM Outdoor shows two men loading a trailer, stealing the company's blue Polaris four-wheeler. This happened around 5 Monday morning. And by the way, BAM Outdoor is in the 2900 block of State Road 32. Employees arriving at work noticed the vehicle missing and called police. The suspect sped away east on State Road 32 in a black Ford Explorer. Anyone with info was asked to call the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. It's a new school year and a big question many parents have. How do I monitor and regulate my child's smartphone use? It can be tough for kids to focus and pay attention in school, especially when social media apps are the norm and can be a big distraction. Recent research from the University of Chicago shows even with the phone turned off and face down, its mere presence lowers cognitive capacity. Developing boundaries starts both ways. Kiara Morales is a recent high school graduate. Her mom checked everything. I felt a little upset with her because I felt like she didn't really have a lot of trust in me and I, I felt like she was treating me like I'm a lot younger than I really am. Mental health counselor Erin Beck agrees with Morales. She says parents should have boundaries with privacy. Messages back and forth would be private, just like back in the day we exchanged notes. And how mortified would we be if our parents read those? Instead, check everything publicly shared. Tonight, President Trump claims legal immigrants who need public assistance are a tax burden. He's also standing behind his latest effort to curb immigration. ABC's Tara Palmieri with the new developments tonight. President Trump defiant after critics charged that the administration's latest immigration rule unfairly penalizes poor, non-white immigrants. I don't think it's fair to have the American taxpayer pay for people to come into the United States. The new regulation affects legal immigrants who may utilize or qualify for public assistance, like food stamps and subsidized housing. Half a million people apply for green cards each year, and more than half are at risk of being permanently denied citizenship. The acting director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services suggesting that Emma Lazarus's famous words on the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, would be better written. Give me your tired and your poor who can stand on their own two feet. 
and who will not become a public charge. 2020 presidential hopefuls blasting the president. So this idea that just because you partake in some government benefits, the idea that you're somehow lazy or you have no value to the community or to the country, I mean, you know, that could be further from the truth. This is an issue for me of cruelty. It's an issue of opportunity. It's an issue of being a nation that stands for its values. Current green card holders and those renewing green cards, pregnant women, and children, refugees and asylum seekers will not be affected. And the Associated Press says that legal immigrants use significantly less public benefits than native-born adults. And the legal challenges are coming in the states of California, Connecticut, and New York say they plan to sue the administration. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, Washington. Well, calling all muggles. You're going to need your sorcery for a huge event coming to Indianapolis. White River State Park is the site of the inaugural Harry Potter Wizards Unite Fan Festival over Labor Day weekend. And this event will bring the popular mobile game Harry Potter Wizards Unite to White River State Park for an interactive experience for fans. The two-day event takes place on Saturday, August 31st and Sunday, September 1st. And you can get general admission tickets for $30. Early access passes are available for 40 bucks. It'll be a lot of wand waving. Fun. I was going right? to say, I'm going to have to pull out my Harry Potter <laughs> wand for this one. Yeah, and we've been in a little bit of a dry spell lately, haven't we? We've got a chance for some rain in the forecast, but most of us are going to be staying dry the next few days. Out there right now, it looks like it could rain, certainly as we've got some sunshine kind of bouncing in and casting some shadows off of those darker clouds. And we'll check out where we've got a few of those isolated showers in just a second. Right now, it's 86 degrees for you in Bloomington. We've made it to 83 degrees in Indian, 82 right now in Kokomo. Storm Team 6 radar, yeah, you got to go in pretty close here to find any of these showers here lined up just north of Interstate 70 between Fountain City and Richmond, back just to the north of Knightstown. And these are sliding off to the southeast. Not going to last very long at all, just some brief rainfall as they move through. Here's a look at TrueCast. Again, about a 20% chance of a passing shower this evening. So if you are going to be heading out to the Indians game, you may see that move through. But again, it wouldn't last very long for you, and we'll get the ball game in with no problems there. As kids are heading off to the bus stop in the morning, we'll be dry. Temperatures tomorrow morning into the upper 60s for us, with mostly cloudy skies sticking around throughout the day. And as we get into the afternoon, that heating of the afternoon once again, sparking off a spotty shower, possibly an isolated rumble of thunder. But again, only about 20% that we're going to see any rainfall here as we go throughout our Wednesday afternoon. So if you are going to be heading off to the Indiana State Fair, looks like it's it's going to be a pretty nice one for you. May want to take along that umbrella just in case here with temperatures that will make their way to 80 degrees for the lunch hour, lower 80s for that afternoon high. Still going to be a little on the humid side, even though our winds are going to be out of a northwest direction. They'll be fairly light, only about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your high 86 in Columbus, 83 Wednesday afternoon in Lafayette and 82 in Muncie. So here are those abnormally dry conditions that continue to kind of encroach on central Indiana. And if you're like me, it seems like those rain chances go up as soon as you get the car wash. So you might want to do that the next couple days if you need some rainfall. But otherwise, not a bad time to get that car washed as our rain chances only 20% tomorrow. Looks like we'll be dry on Thursday. And then on Friday, another isolated chance for a passing shower. Seven-day planning forecast as we look ahead to the weekend. A little better chance for some rain right now and a few storms. Only about 30% though, so no need to cancel your plans. Look at what happens to temperatures. We'll go from seasonably mild mild numbers with afternoon highs in the lower 80s. We'll get into the upper 80s by Saturday and Sunday, and yeah, it's going to be humid out there as well. <laughs> all right. There goes the hair, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad hair. Uh-huh. You guys know all about that. You know all about it, right? <laughs> hey, water in a can. It could happen, mm. and it's all in an effort to protect the environment. This is new. Coca-Cola plans to start offering its Dasani water in aluminum cans and bottles next year to make it more environmentally friendly. The company hopes to collect and recycle the equivalent of every bottle or can it sells by 2030. Yeah, aluminum is easier to recycle than plastic, so moving customers away from plastic could help keep it out of our waterways. Dasani will still be available in plastic bottles too, but they'll be lighter weight. A man learns a hard lesson following a surgery. What you can learn from this cautionary tale coming up. Hoosiers only on RTV6. 
Hello, I'm Ted Rollins with Court TV Live. We are following several cases today in Tennessee. A jury is deliberating Eric Boyd's fate. He's facing first degree murder and rape charges for his role in a vicious attack on a young couple in West Knoxville. The attack took place 12 years ago. As soon as we get a verdict in that case, we will bring it to you live. We are also covering a murder trial out of West Virginia. Morgan Vandergriff was allegedly speeding through a neighborhood and didn't bother to slow down when a school bus was trying to make a U-turn. 38-year-old John Maynard was sitting in a driveway with his friend. He jumped into action. He's shouting at Vandergriff to stop and slow down. Onlookers say that Vandergriff then purposely swerved his vehicle to hit Maynard, who ended up dying from the impact. Vandergriff, on the other hand, says he swerved because he was trying to avoid a beer bottle that Maynard had thrown at him. None of the witnesses, though, support that a story. Uh, they say Maynard never threw anything at Vandergriff's car. Uh, we will have gavel to gavel coverage of that case as well right here on Court TV. They're picking a jury um, and they'll have openings. We'll have it all gavel to gavel. I'm Ted Rollins. Now back to you in the studio. Well, this may be a new one for you. You have to take out your dentures before surgery. One man didn't, and he learned what can happen the hard way. In a case report published by the British Medical Journal on Monday, a 72-year-old man had a minor surgery to remove a lump from his abdominal wall. He then returned to the hospital six days later, complaining of blood in his mouth and difficulties breathing and swallowing. Doctors were unable to diagnose the problem at first and sent the man home. But he returned two days later with worsening symptoms. That's when doctors found his dentures in side of his body lying across his vocal cords. He suffered complications over the following month before eventually healing. There's a lot of questions with this one, but the x-ray helps. Glad, the x-ray always helps. Glad he's healing. Right. Ouch. Coming up all new tonight at six details you'll hear only on RTV6 surrounding the arrest of an Indianapolis state representative accused of drunken driving and impersonating an officer. But first on the now Indy, do you recognize this man, the allegations against him and what you can do to help police find him? You're watching RTV6.